So I woke up to flashing letters on the Weather Network site, um, trying to direct me to CBC, where Bob Chiarelli was going to make an important announcement about infrastructure. That seems important, so I decided to check it out. I think it's maybe not what anybody was expecting. I think maybe people were expecting something a little bit more um, uh, substantive um, by their own you know, definition. In my view, this actually is very substantive. Um, they're, they're dumping millions of dollars on building um, a broadband network um, in the rural areas of southern Ontario. People are going to shrug that off, you know. But I actually think it's very, very important uh, for the province, for the future of the province. It's a great idea. Um, expensive, but who cares? And, and something that left-leaning governments everywhere should look into. They're arguing it will be good for the economy, and they might even be right, but I, I support the idea more on social engineering grounds. If you look at a map of most of the world right now, you notice something pretty dramatic. Urban areas lean towards inclusive liberal parties, and rural areas lean inwards and towards the right. Ontario is no different. Modernizing the rural areas could consequently be interpreted as a type of enlightened gerrymandering. That's right. How do you change the map? That's one way to do it. We need to eat, though, too, so we need to have these farms. And we need to have these farms that are away from the pollution that comes with industrial society, right? I hypothesize that one of the biggest reasons that we have these divides is the insularity of rural communities. It's the fact that they're separate, right? If you live on a farm that's an hour drive from any real civilization, you just don't come into contact with any kind of diversity. So you're naturally suspicious of it, because you don't know it. And you don't know what you don't understand. It's the other, right? We go on this big psychological discussion, but I mean, I think, I think this is intuitively obvious to just about everybody, right? I say I hypothesize, but I I think it's, a, it, it's as much of an empirical observation as it is a hypothesis, right? Increasing internet access in rural areas is consequently a sort of window into the present for a lot of these communities who otherwise have little access to modernity. And that is the truth. It may be hard for you in your, you know, in your Starbucks and in, in your downtown to, to understand that there are people an hour's drive away from you that have never seen a black person. That have never seen an Indian person. That have never seen a Muslim. It's right under our noses. Shouldn't we try to do something about that? I say little access, it's not zero access, okay? But one of the major windows into the world from these communities right now is the print media, which is dominated by the right wing. In Canada, we have the Sun Chain along with the National Post. Replacing the bottleneck on information in the print media with an open internet access will broaden people's opinions because it will allow them to determine their own sources. Will people go to the National Post website? Sure. Right? But signing up for Facebook, as much of an echo chamber as it is, as much of a circle jerk as it is, will at least expose people to different opinions. And that's broadly not possible right now, the way that things are. So, I mean, it's not going to lead to seat changes overnight. Don't think it will. It may even take a generation, really, to have any meaningful effect, but it may be the single most powerful thing that the left can do to break the lock that the right has on rural communities. I've been pushing this for a while, and I'm happy to see the government pick it up. Something else that I'm in strong support of and that could come out of this is the idea that internet lines should be interpreted as public infrastructure, like roads. So I hope that the government hangs onto the lines this time. We had publicly owned phone and cable lines in Canada for a long time, but sold them off during the neoliberal period, which hopefully is over. Uh, that was a big error. error. Um, you know, do we need to really buy these lines back? I don't really think there's a lot of future in owning a phone line. Um, it, it might be useful to um, stop the, so, the, uh, you know, the, the privatization of the airwaves. That might be useful. Um, but I mean, I'm talking about more like public access. I went over this once before, right? Like not government control, but collective ownership, right? So that anybody can send anything out anywhere. We don't need the strict control over the airlines. And certainly the worst thing we can do is sell it off to private interests, right? Private property.
property in the air. It's insane. It's a it's a libertarian's dream, right? or a right libertarian's dream. I should be careful. The language, the Orwellian language, it gets to you, right? Even even when you understand what it is and what it's about, it still gets to you. Um, if they can hold on to the lines, if they can maintain public ownership of the lines, that will be huge. This government's a little bit fishy with stuff like that. Um, I, I I don't have a lot of faith in it, but at least if they can set it up. Um, and they can make it their own, um, they might um, see some opposition um, to selling it off. Um, and it might um, might help us do things like buy back our grid. Or, I mean, I, we don't, why do we need to buy it? Let's just seize it, right? Fuck your property rights. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I really don't. Fuck your property rights. Fuck them. Anyways, so I think this is a good idea. It's nice to see, nice thing to wake up to in the morning. Um, even uh, if, if a lot of people um, found it a little bit anticlimactic. Let's, uh, let's see what's up next for the rest of the day.